I find it interesting that sometimes profitability, productivity seemed, there's a perception that it's at odds with ecological outcomes, biodiversity, and we don't see that. Like maybe that's the case sometimes, but we run a pretty hard bar over any decision we make. I'm Jacinta, and this is my husband Adam, and uh, we farm here in Marine Vale with our two boys. We've got two and a half thousand hectares of uh, cattle property. Our strategy certainly early on was really based around finances or lack thereof and, and I guess we're no different to a lot of other producers in the sense that yeah, we're on a pretty tight budget. We certainly after getting the lay of the land put together a whole farm plan I suppose and that evolves. It's not something we set in concrete in the first year and, and then everything happens that way. Well the trees are a classic example because we hadn't actually planned to knock over the plantation timber. We sort of thought five years time we'd probably have enough capital behind us to do that and um, it became pretty apparent that we couldn't run cattle with them up so we decided it had to happen a bit sooner rather than later so we sort of had to rejuggle the plan around and, and as Adam said that kind of happens all the time. We've got a, our budget as a very malleable <laughs> spreadsheet. And it has to be when you're dealing with the seasonal variability. I mean, we had the water plan, you could say it was the same thing. We had, we had a water articulation plan, um, which was originally going to be implemented over a five plus year period, was all brought forward into two years because we've had, you know, very much below average rainfall. So we put down six bores and we reticulated to most paddocks because we've had no surface water. Um, the way we run our cattle, we run them in big mobs, so water and clean water is, is crucial. So really that's just been in a conversation with the bank. So now every dollar we spend, I guess, is, is really focusing on, on making a return. So if it doesn't do that, we don't spend it. So we're, we've invested in a disc seeder, you know, boom spray. We're doing pasture renovation. We've mucked around with um, sort of, we're going down that multi-species line, I suppose, and we, we, we renovated it. We've done nearly 100 hectares this year. Um, up to sort of 12, sometimes 15 species in a paddock. And, and really that's, that's about uh, boosting production obviously and, and diet variability for our cattle but it's probably also more about getting our soils ticking and getting the bo soil biology working in our favour so that we can start to get this cycle happening again. So along with the pasture development we've been using lots of different uh, technologies. We've been using grazing charts for a little while now. I basically worked out what were the the basic items that we needed to record for that. And then two years down the track when I had my head around it and I knew what they were about, I actually went back and I had all the information and I was able to go through it and I finished a grazing chart for each year. And so we've been able to look back and see what our starting point was and how we've improved since then. On the soil and pasture side, Phil at Seabo Labs has been fantastic and this fantastic satellite technology where the satellite passes over every five days and takes a picture of the whole property and then every three passes that information is all amalgamated and we get a report. It's fascinating, we can see what grasses are photosynthesising, you know, what's growing, what's not growing. Kilos of dry matter per hectare. Yeah, kilos of dry matter. When cattle are taken out we can see where they've grazed that pasture and you know, we might say, oh, those cattle aren't wanting to go up in that back corner. But then when we get the report we can see that it, it's actually true and, and there's so much feed left up there. So we can, we now know, well that's where the next fence is going to go and we're going to make them go up in that paddock and we'll use that. So um, that's just been hugely beneficial from that side of it. With our stocking densities it's been, it's a really tough thing. It sounds really easy, put your cattle together and rotate them and away you go. But um, when you're trying to deal with your own cattle, adjustment cattle, you know, we've got breeders, we've got traders, it's not that easy all the time just to put them all together. So we're still working on that and um, I think we're probably closest now than we've ever been in terms of getting those rest periods in. But the stocking density is crucial and we found that trying to get that mob size up so you can put them in there, really give that um, feed a good eat and then smash down the rest that's left over and then get them out and have a good long rest. We're getting closer, what are we, probably at a 25 hectare paddock size average I suppose and we're running you know, a five, 600 livestock unit in, in a mob um, and we slow our rotations right down when our feed's maturing this time of year but when we're growing in a growth phase we're probably moving every you know, four to six days. It's really exciting to see the, the change in the pasture, just the makeup of all the different types over the time we've been doing it. And as we've increased the density, it's made a huge difference. Well, what's really encouraging with our, our carrying capacity, I guess, is that you know we've had three of the worst years in living memory on the coast here. Um, we're in 1100 mil average, and here we are again now on a, with a 300, 350 millimeter growing season. But the fact that we've probably still been able to carry, you know, over half, two thirds, three quarters of us of our stocking stock numbers through these dry periods, and then also see the health of the country increase, it sort of gives you a bit of a bit of hope that what we're doing is right.
Yeah, I suppose that the immediate future is, is pretty exciting. We've signed up to a soil carbon agreement under the Land Restoration Fund, the, the Queensland Government's fund. Whilst soil carbon credits will be nice if we can increase our organic matter and our organic carbon, it's not really why we did it. It's, it's what it's going to do for us is really focus us hard on increasing our soil carbon. I mean, soil carbon is probably the one metric that can't be disputed in terms of productivity, uh, ecological outcomes, they all go hand in hand with increased organic matter in your soil and thus carbon. So, I guess it's something we're focusing on now too because the cattle prices are so high. You know, we've, we've de-stocked again early this growing season because it, again it didn't eventuate. So how do you get back in again when you don't have a lot of capital behind you? And so I guess then you focus on what you can do and so you know the pasture renovation is something that we can still keep going on and maybe we we'll use other people's cattle to, to then finish it off. Mm. The exciting thing for us is that I find it interesting that sometimes profitability, productivity seem to, there's a perception that it's at odds with ecological or outcomes, biodiversity, and we don't see that. Like maybe that's the case sometimes, but we run a pretty hard bar over any decision we make, and it's got to, it's got to stack up. Profitability is, is first and foremost. If we're not making money, we're not here to do it. But the ecological outcomes, the biodiversity increases, it's, there's so many places where that stuff goes hand in hand. It's, it's really quite simple. So I guess some of the key learnings we've probably come across along the way is um, don't be scared to ask people for help. Uh, there's so much help in this industry if you ask for it and if you're willing to. Adam's always ringing people and hassling them and asking them questions and people are more than willing to give a hand. The other thing for us too, and we're still getting better at it, we've always got room for improvement, is making a decision when you need to make it. Not dithering around and saying, well, you know, the, the seasons didn't quite eventuate and we might be running out of grass, but maybe we'll get some rain in a month. And we've made some hard decisions that are really, you know, trucking out replacement cattle when, you, when it really hits you in the guts. But, and, and maybe that wasn't the right decision with the benefit of hindsight, but any decision you make at that point in time is the correct one to be making, but it's a matter of being disciplined and making it. <laughs>